Okay, a very warm welcome everyone. Today we are going to have a discussion on artificial neural networks. Under today's class of machine learning, we'll start with the concepts of overview of artificial neural networks. You are going to understand what is an artificial neural network. You are going to visualize the concepts of artificial neural networks along with understanding the fundamentals of artificial neural network. Along with, you are going to see the first neuron the first artificial neuron, which is known as perceptron and how the perceptron works. You are going to understand it. Then you're going to make a collection of multiple perceptrons to make a feed forward neural network to solve a real time business problem. Generally, artificial neural networks are capable of solving three kinds of problems. And these are the problems related to image recognition, problems related to speech recognition and problems related to natural language processing. These are the three core areas whose problems, the complex problems you can actually solve with artificial neural network. Now, when it comes to artificial neural network, you can consider something artificial and a collection of neurons and a complete network of neurons who's going to solve your problems out. But before we land up into an artificial neural network, I would like you all to have a quick look about how brain works and how the neuron works. So for that, I have brought to you a pretty nice video from YouTube and here I quickly would like to play that for you so that you guys will be able to have a quick understanding about how brain works and let's go back to our old school days uh, and just remember that how the brain works and once you get to know about how the brain works and how the neurons in the brain works, then we will land up to artificial intelligence. So let's quickly have a- Brain is the most fascinating part of the human body. Not much to look at, it resembles a spongy mass of tissue, feels like tofu, and weighs roughly four tubs of butter. Our brain is actually made up of mostly water and about 10% fats. While our brain only makes up approximately 2% of the entire body's weight, it uses a massive 20% of the body's energy. The brain's basic building blocks are known as neurons, and we- So guys, here comes our uh, our deal which we need to crack the neurons part so neurons how they work in the brain kindly stay uh, put your attention here and once you are able to understand how neuron works i'll take you to what artificial neurons are of around 100 billion of these each with between 1000 to 10000 connections to other neurons creating neural pathways or roads within the brain so now here there is a very potential information which you guys could note. Approximately in a brain, there are 86 billion neurons. Okay. So how many neurons we have in a brain? It's approximately 86 billion neurons we have uh, in the brain. And these neurons are tightly connected to each other. As you all can see here, the neurons are connected to each other, not all neurons but there are a couple of neurons which are connected to each other and they pass information with each other in order to get some work done, in order to uh, make some sense and in order to perform a motor action onto a body. So let's quickly continue from here and let's quickly have a look how neurons work. There are literally trillions of neural connections within the brain. Similar to a city's electrical power grid, Information is passed along these roads through a series of chemical messages and electrical impulses. As all of this activity takes place, our brain generates between 10 to 25 watts of power, enough to power a light bulb. Over the course of one day, your brain generates more electrical impulses from firing neurons than all of the telephones in the world. So really, your brain isn't just a spongy mass of tissue. It's your most complex organ, a power station that connects your every thought, movement and feeling. Okay, so guys, just to give you this brief information about how brain works and how... And it's firing right now. Uh, uh, you understand about what neurons are and they are available inside the brain and they are tightly connected to each other. And the, the objective of neurons is to receive a sense and once the sense is received, to perform a motor action. This is something what a neuron does. Now, I would like to take you 
to a concept that why we do need to use neurons in order to sort the co complex problems out uh, which are available in the world so that's what is our objective so in order to do that i've got a pretty quick note which you all can quickly read along with me here and i'm going to explain that so here what is a neural network a neural network is a beautiful biologically inspired programming paradigm which enables a computer to learn from observational data which means we will be given some data and using that observational data we are going to develop a programming solution of whatever problem is available using a neural network that's what is our objective now when it comes to neural networks you may be thinking what Uh, could be a neuron and how we can represent a biological neuron into a computable neuron so we are going to come to that point so that you can understand what neurons are and what kind of neurons are available with machine learning which you can actually use which you can connect with each other and once connected you can solve complex problems out now secondly what is deep learning that's a big question deep learning is a powerful set of techniques for learning in neural networks so suppose you have a set of neural network available but how to learn within that neural network how the computer is going to learn within that neural network is known as deep learning so our objective is to understand the concepts of neural network initially that what is a neuron what is the network of neuron how this network of neurons work and then we have to understand that within this network of neurons what the computer can learn what are the properties what are the attributes which a computer can learn that's what we need to identify that's what is our objective okay so i hope everybody is clear with the concept that we are going to work on artificial neural network artificial neural network is a network of artificial neurons to give you an example of an artificial neuron we have a perceptron example available and one of the widely one of the most widely used neuron in machine learning today is known as sigmoid neuron i'm going to come to the point where i will be explaining perceptrons and sigmoid neurons to all of you and let you all understand them technically and throw uh, the knowledge onto a python notebook and you will be able to solve the complex problems with your programming language and with your code solutions now so you are clear with neural networks you are clear with deep learning now we have to understand what neural networks and deep learning together can do so neural networks and deep learning currently provide the best solutions to many problems in image recognition speech recognition and natural language processing so these kinds of problems can actually be solved with artificial neural network suppose you have set of mri images of brain and you want to predict tumor you can do that with artificial neural network similarly suppose you are uh, working on twitter and you want to analyze n number of people's data on twitter about any event or about what they feel like about an issue uh, about their political interests about which party they are more interested to vote all kinds of knowledge can be extracted using artificial neural networks and with the deep learning concepts with the deep learning algorithms you can predict the appropriate output approximately 99.9% accurate so which can actually help you predict the future for those kind of data which is unstructured which is unmappable okay so that's what we are going to do in order to do that let's quickly get started with neural networks during our training program we are going to solve a couple of practical problems out using this neural network and the first problem we are going to sort out will be a visualized neural network so here on your screen i hope my screen is visible to everyone can you all see that here is a diagram over here and just to show you what i have here on the diagram i have a set of input images available on the left hand side here as you all can see suppose i have selected a value 1 as an image this is a data set for handwriting recognition suppose there are n number of data available of different handwritings and we want to predict one specific handwriting or one specific uh, number from the handwritten from the handwritten message we are going to take that image and what is the out objective of using artificial network 
the objective is that the computer should be easily able to predict that this value is one. Okay, that's what is the requirement. Now, in order to do that, we have to pass this image through various layers. Okay, what these layers could be, I'm going to explain you that. But similarly, like any normal computer operation, you can quickly consider that you have an input section initially, and on the other end side, you have an output section. Okay. And between this input and output section, you have a hidden section. Let's call it as hidden layers. These hidden layers form a network of neurons and they solve complex problems out for you. So how this can be done? We have to understand that with certain concepts. So now just to give you a quick visual that suppose an input of 101 is given and using the concept of artificial neural network, what can be done? You can see that on individual layers, one will be identified, latices of one will be identified and finally the one will be predicted at the output end. That's what is going to happen. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to understand how this process can be done. And finally, you are going to come up with a programming code, which can actually solve this problem out. But as I told you in the pre start, that artificial neural network is one of the most important concept of deep learning and machine learning. And if you understand this, you will be able to solve real time complex problems of image recognition, speech recognition and natural language processing. So you need to understand these concepts with from the very basics and you need to understand how each and every step is working. That's very important. So now, so let's quickly proceed to the next segment. And in the next segment, I have brought to you some of the uh, visualizations so as to make you understand about how actually neurons work, how the layers work and what are the layers. We are going to understand all these concepts. So, uh, just to give you a quick brief, you all have got the basic definition. The basic definition says neural networks is a beautiful biological inspired programming paradigm, which enables a computer to learn from observational data. So we need to have an observational data using which our neural network is going to learn and how that learning can be done. This learning technique is known as deep learning. So we have to understand how deep learning can be done and what all properties are required for deep learning. Okay. Now, so let me just quickly take you to very important stuff. What is artificial neurons available for you? Okay. So here I would like to share a very nice video of an artificial neuron for you. And then I'm going to explain you what an artificial neuron could be. So here let's, let me just quickly take you to what an artificial neuron could be. So suppose you have a brain. So let's say you have a computer and a computer has n number of data available, or you can say the data bytes available or the registers available. And over these registers, these are connected to each other. Consider the concept of neurons that neurons are connected to each other. Now, what could be a neuron? So we can consider neuron is something which can hold a number. Okay. You can take neuron as a simple variable. A variable can hold the data. But what we consider initially a neuron is something which can hold a value between zero to one. Okay. Because as you all understand computer is a computer uses binary language and binary has only zeros and one. So we can represent any data between zero and one. So what a neuron is, you can consider neuron as a variable or uh, as a storage space which can store a value for you or which can hold a number for you. And this number can vary from zero to one. Okay. So somehow if you would think that can we store two in it, identically not, you cannot store two in a neuron because the computer actually represents the value between zero to one. So any possible values between zero to one up to any decimal numbers, you can store into one single neuron. So just to quickly get back, to make you realize the concept that what is a neuron neuron is something which actually holds a number. I hope this is clear to everyone. Please let me know on chat that if you are clear, 
that programmatically you you all can consider that neuron is something which can hold a number okay everyone are you all able to understand okay so i've got answer from mr vinay yeah okay great so neuron is something which can actually hold a number now what you can do when you can hold a number okay so now you need to understand how this one single neuron can help you out with solving the real time problems okay now be very attentive on the on the screen so you have got a neuron now one question you can ask me here what is an artificial neuron okay so now in order to quickly tell you all the very first neuron the very first artificial neuron which has been developed in 1950s was perceptron so deep learning is not a pretty new concept it has roots from uh, 1950s in fact so in 1950s the very first neuron neuron has been developed for artificial intelligence and that was known as perceptron so i hope everybody is clear with this term at the end you are going to face a quiz and all these kinds of questions will be asked in that and those of you who are able to clear the quiz will only get access to the next class and that's for sure so be very attentive and if you are able to answer all the questions only then i'll i'm going to get you access to the next class so what is an artificial neuron an artificial neuron can be considered as a storage which can store a value between 0 to 1 it is a thing that can hold a number and what what is the first neuron the first neuron was perceptron which was developed in 1950s okay now i would like to take you to the official definition of what a perceptron is and then i'm going to explain you how it works and later i'm going to take you to the visualizations that how the perceptrons work in the real scenario so here let me take you to the next step now in the next step i have got the definition of perceptrons available for you so to get started what a perceptron is perceptron is an artificial neuron perceptrons were developed in 1950s and 60s by scientist frank rosenblatt which was inspired by the work of warren mcclouch and walter pitts okay so now it was the very first neuron and it is very important for you all to understand how that neuron worked but today we have a lot of other models for artificial neurons okay it's not like only perceptron is the one neuron which can be used there are different kinds of neurons available in artificial intelligence uh, education section and one of the most common neuron used today is known as sigmoid neuron so you guys are going to understand about perceptron first followed by the sigmoid neuron okay so now you need to understand that how perceptrons work that is very important for you all to understand so i'm going to quickly give you a simple one neuron which is known as a perceptron so over the screen you can quickly see an example perceptron available over here okay you can consider a perceptron somewhat like this wherein you have a neuron okay at the center you have this neuron available and this neuron can take three inputs consider x1 consider x2 and x3 these inputs can vary from 1 to n you can have n number of inputs depending of n number of inputs given to your neuron you will be able to generate an output okay <clears throat> if it would be a brain what could have been done agar ye aapka brain hota originally to aapke paas senses se aapko input milta और उन सेंसेस के उन इनपुट से आप क्या जनरेट करते यू वुड बी जनरेटिंग अ मोटर एक्शन ओके इफ इट वुड हैव बीन अ रियल ब्रेन होता क्या है जैसे मान लो इफ आई गिव यू एन एग्जांपल मान लीजिए कहीं पे आग लगी हुई है ठीक है तो आपकी स्किन ने सेंस किया कि भाई आग लगी है ड्यू टू हीट और या फिर आपकी आईज ने आइडेंटिफाई किया बाय विजुअलाइजिंग द इमेज दैट ओके देयर इज सम काइंड ऑफ हीट और देयर इज सम काइंड ऑफ फ्लेम इज गोइंग ऑन सो you can give that signal to the brain to the neuron 
and using that signal the brain can identify with the predefined patterns that okay it could be fire so due to fire brain can give different kinds of actions it could be like uh, run run from there or call and uh, a fire station uh, that fire bus what we call so so that they can come and diffuse the fire and kind of that okay so this is something like a perceptron which is used but it's very easy to say how brain works but when we have to represent a scientific problem or an it problem with a computer and we have to make that computer learn with respect to the neural network then it might be a little complex but if you understand the concept well then there will be no difficulty in sorting any complex problems with artificial neural networks because one of the best part with artificial neural networks is you don't need to do anything they will be learning on their own and depending on their learning they will let you know the output okay you don't need to program it i hope you all understand so artificial neural networks gives you that capability that you don't need to give a decision making logic to the program artificial neural network will be learning on its own depending on the inputs provided and it will be performing an action without any decision logic so you don't need to know the logic in order to solve a complex problem out you feed the complex problem to the neural network neural network will learn from the problem and from whatever data is available and it is going to generate an output okay so now so now we have to think of how a neural network can sort a basic problem out by the time before i proceed to the next segment where i will be explaining you that how a perceptron is going to solve a real business problem out or real real problem out you just need to confirm me on chat whether it is clear that what is a single perceptron a single perceptron has a neuron which has a specific uh, output and it takes in a couple of inputs depending on the inputs it generates the output we don't need to provide any decision logic in it the neuron is going to learn on its own depending on the neural connections okay is that clear till now please confirm me on chat uh, sir there will be questions. only uh, one neuron uh, yeah can you frame your question again please i didn't get that sir uh, there could be only one neuron or there might be more than one there can be n number of neurons approximately okay. in in a brain there are 86 billion neurons and similarly you can have 86 billion neurons uh, in a network and it's not limited to 86 billion it actually depends on the storage capacity so it's like how many variables you want to create suppose you have uh, a storage space of 1 gb so you can create variables of 1 gb size so you can have 1 gigabyte uh, of neurons available so, so it totally depends We can say, sir, the, the neuron. Uh, sorry, percept perceptron is a collection of neurons. Yeah, we can say like. Yeah, perceptron is actually a one single neuron, and this one single neuron can make a combination of multiple neurons, and that is known as a multi-layer perceptron. Okay, so, that is a multi-layer perceptron. Okay. Yes, yes. Got it. So when you have multiple perceptrons, they will be called as a multi-layer perceptron. So Thank one you. single entity. is perceptron and multiple perceptrons form a multi layer perceptron okay okay sir. similarly we have a sigmoid neuron and a collection of sig sigmoid neurons make a multi layer sigmoid neural network okay okay great so now i hope all the questions are clear if anybody has any questions please ask me on chat if till now it is clear please let me know yes on your chat messages so that we can proceed further in explaining the how we we can solve a real problem out great so now so now here uh, you have got a very simple view of what could be a perceptron so a perceptron could be a variable or it could be a equation it could be a logic to which you are going to give some inputs and it's going to give you an output but the thing is we cannot give an equation we want the system to learn the equation on its own that what's working best depending on the scenario okay so now i would like to take you to explaining what a perceptron can do with a real time case study okay so i'm going to give you a sample problem and i want all of you to feel the problem along with me 
okay now let's say there's a problem that uh, let's say my name is devanshu shukla devanshu shukla wants to go for a movie could you name any latest movie coming in let's say we'll take we'll take any movie like uh, any latest movie money heist is pretty a uh, tv series is very common and I, like that so let's say i want to go and watch something like a tv series or uh, a movie okay and that movie would be known as money heist so when i have to go for a movie i have to decide something okay what i have to do i have to decide whether i want to go for a movie or not so what would be the decision uh decision possibilities could be uh let's say yes i want to go or else it could be like no i i don't want to go or i could not go when i have to decide whether i have to go or not so let's say you can consider yes as one and you can consider no as zero okay i hope till now it is clear that i want to go for a movie and in order to go for a movie i have to decide whether i want to go or not so i have two possibilities let's say yes and no and we are going to solve this problem using perceptron let's say okay so using perceptron how we can solve the problem we quickly need to understand a couple of things let's say what all factors are responsible responsible on which my decision may vary my decision will be based on let's say will be based on so here i am going to write some of the quick factors let's say uh, how's the weather today is it rainy or is it good weather whether i do have my car at home or not so that i can go for a movie or not let's say there would be another factor uh, like uh, whether my friends are going or not okay friends are going or not so let's say in order to make a decision that i want to go for a movie and you can uh, you can use this situation with various other problems like you want to go for an event or you want to go into some marriage or kind of any problem you want to learn or not there are so many factors and there are so many things so whenever a human brain decides anything these are based on a lot of factors okay so now once you have these three factors listed over here i would like to quickly give you three factors which i want to create here okay so let's say i am going to say there will be three factors here the first factor uh, okay just give me a moment okay here so let's say i would like to make my factors here let's say my first factor would be the weather factor similarly i will have another factor as my car factor and there will be third factor and this is going to be my whether my friends are going or not and depending on these factors i'm going to give this value to the perceptron okay the final neural network and i'm going to get an output here now if i want to make a neural network you can consider we have four neurons here and these four neurons are connected to the output okay depending on these three neurons i'm going to decide what is going to be my final output okay and consider my final output could be it could be either yes which you can consider as one or it could be no which you can consider as zero okay these could be the factors okay yes or no i hope this is clear till now it is clear to all of you so we have three factors yahan pe mere paas first factor hai that's called as the weather this is my weather factor second factor is my car factor and third factor could be my friends factor okay let's say third factor would be my friends factor now whenever you have to decide something 
let's say if you want to go for a movie or not your decision will be depending on these three factors weather car and friends okay so let's say yahan weather car or friends ke bhi teen values hain hamare paas okay it could be either zero or one i have already told you that within a perceptron or within one specific neuron you can store only two values either zero or one okay when it comes to a sigmoid neuron you can store n number of values between 0 to 1 it could be like 0.1 0.2 0.3 0.4 0.4 like that so here you have to keep this thing in your mind in perceptron what you can do is you can only store either 0 or 1 but in sigmoid neuron you can store any values between 0 to 1 okay is this point clear till now is this point clear let me know on chat is my if my voice is audible and you all are able to understand what i'm saying great so i've got a couple of messages here and here the messages say is everything is going fine okay now let's see so uh you have to decide the output yes or no and your output depends on three conditions let's say weather car and friends now weather car and friends could be any of these two values it could be either 0 or 1 similarly you can have values of car like whether the car is at home or car is not at home and similarly you have the third factor which is uh, and you have the third factor and the third factor says whether your friends want to go or not so there could be three things which can make up to your decision okay now once you are going to do that how will you decide that whether you want to go or not so let's say you will say theek hai ki agar do cheeze hain aapke paas theek hai agar maan lo weather kharab hai but aapke paas car hai to koi problem nahi hai you can go to a movie और अगर आपके फ्रेंड्स भी जा रहे हैं तो यू आर गोइंग टू गेट अ थ्रेश होल्ड काइंड ऑफ अ वैल्यू सो नाउ देयर शुड बी अ डिसाइडिंग फैक्टर ओके एंड दिस डिसाइडिंग फैक्टर इज नोन एज न्यूरॉन पैरामीटर सो जो आपका आउटपुट न्यूरॉन पैरामीटर है व्हिच इज दिस पैरामीटर यू नीड टू हैव अ थ्रेश होल्ड वैल्यू फॉर दिस ओके दिस दिस इज योर आउटपुट न्यूरॉन पैरामीटर एंड दिस न्यू आउटपुट न्यूरॉन पैरामीटर इज नोन एज थ्रेश होल्ड ओके in perceptron it is known as threshold and it is also known as famously it is known as bias okay bias bola jata hai isko so let's say i'll be a little biased aur main kehta hu ki theek hai in case let's say i'm taking it randomly uh let's say agar value 2 hai theek hai agar mere bias ki value 2 aati hai let's say if the value is 2 here then i'm going to go for a movie okay so maine check ki teen conditions पहली कंडीशन में मैंने देखा कि क्या वेदर ठीक है तो आई हैव गॉट अ मैसेज यस द वेदर वाज फाइन सेकंड मैंने क्या घर में कार है यस द कार वाज देयर वुड माय फ्रेंड्स वांट टू गो यस सो व्हाट आई डिड आई हैव मेड अ सम ऑफ ऑल दिस थ्री वन प्लस वन प्लस वन सो व्हेन आई हैव टेकन अ सम ऑफ दिस आई हैव गॉट अ वैल्यू इक्वल टू थ्री ओके सो वेन आई हैव गॉट अ वैल्यू इक्वल टू थ्री एंड थ्री इज ग्रेटर देन टू so my decision would be yes okay in case if the output of all the three perceptrons which i am taking here the collective output of all these three conditions if it is greater than threshold then the answer would be yes and in case if the value is less than threshold then the answer will be no i hope you are understanding this point so you have three neurons these three neurons have got the weather information the car information and the friends information now depending on the information you have got you are going to add all the three values and you are going to check whether it is greater than your bias or threshold or not so let's say if 3 is greater than 2 then your decision is going to be true that yes i would like to go to uh, the movie similarly if we go for another case okay let's say if i take you to the another case another cases that the weather was 
not good okay the weather was not good but you had car and your friends also wanted to go so now in that case the value becomes 2 2 is equal to 2 then that means yes you are going to go for a movie so if the value is greater equal to uh, the threshold then you are going to go for a solution you can also consider it as smaller equal to or greater equal to depending on your choice okay i hope this is clear so now we can reach out to an equation here that if the sum of all these three things okay let's say if x value x1 plus x2 plus x3 is greater than your threshold okay let me call it as th if it is greater than threshold you are going to get 1 but if x1 plus x2 plus x3 is smaller than the threshold okay you can say greater or equal to threshold then the answer is going to be 1 and similarly in this case if it is smaller then the answer is going to be 0 i hope you understand is this equation clear because this equation is very important for you all to understand that if on a neuron you have represented a value between 0 and 1 now after taking a sum of all the three values if your value is greater than the threshold then the decision will be yes if the value is less than threshold then the decision will be no please confirm me if till here you guys are clear okay so how we are deciding we are deciding in a way that we got a problem that do i want to go for a movie yes or no so how can i decide i will ask my brain to decide now how my brain is going to decide that my brain is going to decide with the neurons with the neural network inside now i have collected three information so i have got three sensors or three information my brain has got one information was the weather is not good the second information was but the car is at home so yes i can go and i've got my friends at home uh, friends are also willing to go so i've got the value threshold greater than 2 so i'm going to go for a decision okay so i'm going to say yes similarly in case if any of these values is less than threshold then we are going to say no we are not going to perform that decision okay i hope till now this is clear to everyone so this is the perceptron for you okay fine till now if you have any questions you can please ask me so that i can proceed further please make a note of this equation which i have drawn here because this is very important this is not the official equation i'm going to tell you what is the official equation i'm going to explain you that but this is just for your information okay this is the basic information the first level information but there are a few more things which you need to understand when it comes to neural network okay now sometimes what happens is it's not at the moment when when you have understood this equation you need to understand a couple of more things sometimes what happens is there could be a scenario whether uh, let's say i'll just quickly create the scenario said let me uh, clear all of this and then i'm going to uh, recreate the problem for you or let's say I, i'll just type it over here only so what i'll say sometimes what could happen let's say the weather was not good okay the weather was not good and the car was also not available but friends were willing to go so now in that case what brain can do he can it can search for various options can we can we book a cab to go to the movie or can we go uh, via metro or like that there could be n number of other decisions possible okay so now here comes the concept of weights that 
every factor has a different level of weight available okay weight weight se aap kya samajh sakte hain it's like uh, evidence ya fir aapka interest us decision ke upar kitna hai theek hai agar main aapko example dun jaise maan lo hum movie jana hai weather acha nahi hai ghar pe gaadi bhi nahi hai but dost ne agar force kiya ki are chalte hain yaar bhai chalte hain yaar fir mauka nahi milega fir weekend nahi milega kind of that it would be any reason so now it could be possible कि मेरे फ्रेंड का जो इन्फ्लुएंस है मेरे डिसीजन के ऊपर लेट्स से आउट ऑफ टेन एफ आई हैव टू स्कोर तो अगर मेरा फ्रेंड मुझे फोर्स कर रहा है तो आई विल से सेवेंटी परसेंट इट इज अ चांस दैट आई विल आई विल डेफिनेटली गो ओके यहाँ पे सेवेंटी परसेंट मैंने लिखा है सेवेंटी परसेंट को मैं मान लो आप कहो तो मैं इसको सेवन से मैं रिप्लेस कर रहा हूँ ठीक है लेट्स आई एम रिप्लेसिंग इट आउट ऑफ टेन आई एम रिप्लेसिंग इट विद सेवन इस सेवेंटी मेरे चांसेज हैं कि अगर मेरे फ्रेंड्स मुझे फोर्स करेंगे तो आई विल ट्राई टू गो ओके घर पे अगर कार है या नहीं है इससे ज्यादा फर्क नहीं पड़ता क्योंकि यहाँ पे मान लो 50-50 परसेंट चांसेस हैं घर पे कार हुई तो ठीक है नहीं हुई तो भी देखेंगे ठीक है काइंड ऑफ 50-50 परसेंट चांसेस है वेदर खराब है वेदर की वजह से मूवी के लिए कितने लोग रोकते हैं अ वेरी फ्यू तो लेट से वेदर के ट्वेंटी परसेंट चांसेस ठीक है कि ट्वेंटी हमने वेट दे दिया वेदर को कि अगर वेदर uh, uh, खराब है तो इस डिसीजन को हम 20 परसेंट कंसिडर करेंगे कार के डिसीजन को हम 50 परसेंट कंसिडर करेंगे और फ्रेंड्स के डिसीजन को हम 70 परसेंट कंसिडर करेंगे ओके सो नाउ हियर यू हैव गॉट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ वेट्स व्हाट वी डू वी कॉल देम एज वेट्स लेट्स कॉल इट एज डब्ल्यू वन लेट्स कॉल इट एज डब्ल्यू टू वेट टू एंड दिस वन इज डब्ल्यू थ्री वेट तो अब क्या हो जाएगा आपका डिसीजन मान लो मैंने कहा कि वेदर ठीक था ठीक है बट घर पे कार नहीं है या वेदर ठीक नहीं है घर पे कार नहीं है लेकिन फ्रेंड ने कहा मुझे जाना है तो फ्रेंड का हमने प्रोडक्ट लिया सेवन वन दिन तो माय वैल्यू बिकम सेवन एंड इट इज ग्रेटर देन द थ्रेश प्रोवाइडेड सो नाउ वी विल डेफिनेटली गो फॉर द मूवी तो तीन फैक्टर्स है वेदर कार और फ्रेंड्स लेकिन फ्रेंड्स का वेट ज्यादा है वेटेज ज्यादा है उनकी हमारे डिसीजन के ऊपर तो अगर उनका ट्रू है तो बाकी दोनों फैक्टर्स भी अगर जीरो हैं और फ्रेंड फैक्टर सिर्फ वन है तो हम प्रोडक्ट ले लेंगे हमारी पास जो न्यूरॉन में वैल्यू है उसकी और फ्रेंड्स के वेट की जो उनका इन्फ्लुएंस है डिपेंडिंग ऑन दैट आई एम गोइंग टू गेट द वैल्यू एंड देन अगेन आई एम गोइंग टू चेक वेदर द वैल्यू इज ग्रेटर देन फ्रेश होल्ड और नॉट If the value is greater than threshold, then my decision is going to be yes. Otherwise, it's going to be no. Is that clear? So now, what am I? I am saying is, I am saying that we have got a new equation. And what is the new equation? The new equation says that output is going to depend on the following. It is going to depend upon x one into weight one plus x2 into weight 2 plus x3 into weight 3 okay and if this is greater equal to threshold then the decision is going to be yes otherwise else the decision is going to be zero is that clear ye part clear ho gaya aap logo ko ki single perceptron mein न्यूरल नेटवर्क कैसे काम करता है न्यूरॉन्स कैसे काम करते हैं सो न्यूरॉन्स एवरी इंडिविजुअल न्यूरॉन विल हैव अ वैल्यू जो भी फैक्टर्स आपके पास अवेलेबल हैं जो इनपुट डेटा आपके पास अवेलेबल है उस इनपुट से आप फर्स्ट लेयर बनाते हैं वी कॉल इट एज एन इनपुट लेयर जो आउटपुट जनरेट होगा वी आर गोइंग टू कॉल इट एज एन आउटपुट लेयर सो इफ आई हैव टू मेक सम लेयर्स फॉर यू हियर सो हियर लेट मी जस्ट क्विकली एनोकेट दैट फॉर यू एंड आई एम टू ड्रॉ Some layers for you, so you can consider an artificial neural network. This can be considered as an input layer, and this can be considered as an output layer. And between this input and output layer, there could be n number of hidden layers possible. Okay, so there are three kinds of layers. Three types of layers are there. We have the input layer, input layer of neurons. Then you have the hidden layer of neurons. and finally you have the output layer of neurons okay 
i hope this is clear to all of you now so now how we can quickly write this equation in a mathematical term that's what you guys are going to understand now so just to make you understand this you can quickly form this equation somewhat like that and here i'm going to show you that how you can write that equation so here you can write the equation in this format so your output will be zero if sum of all the weights and the x values the input values and the weight is less than equal to threshold okay you can consider less than equal to or else you can also consider greater than uh, the threshold so in official statement it says it could be less than equal to then it is going to be zero okay and if the output will be one if the product of input factor and the weight of that factor or the influence of that factor and some of all these values if they are greater than the threshold value then it is going to be one understood okay are you all are you guys clear please let me know on chat okay great so now so now you have got this information of the perceptron here now i would like to take you uh, to the next thing okay so post this perceptron what you have is you have a multi layer perceptron okay is represent uh, is equation ko ek aur tarike se hum represent kar sakte hain but uh, i'll show you how it can do so what you can have is you can also have a multi layer perceptron possible okay this is a, a multi layer perceptron in which you're going to provide in the inputs it will go to multiple hidden layers okay there could be multiple hidden layers and these multiple hidden layers are represented here these are the hidden layers of the neuron over which the decision depends so what happens is the output of first input layer will go to the second layer okay the output will go to the second layer it will decide the second layer the output of second layer will decide the activation of third layer and so on there could be n number of layers in a neural network and finally the last layer output is going to activate the final outcome of the network so this is known as a multi layer perceptron multi layer perceptron okay so i hope everybody is clear now what is a perceptron perceptron is an artificial neuron which can hold a number the number can be 0 or 1 and you can represent various information over this number and these numbers uh, there could be n number of n number of neurons in every layer okay so there is no limit to a neuron let's say if you are representing an image okay so let's say uh, let's say the input is an image okay maan lo yahan pe kisi ki image hai okay and this image is of let's say 10 bytes 10 pixels in width and let's say 10 pixels in height so collectively it is going to be 10 into 10 which is going to be 100 pixels so this information is of 100 pixels so your input layer will have 100 perceptrons you will have the input layer where you will have 100 neurons which will be representing the input information okay so i'm going to explain you that with a proper visualization so that you will be able to understand and this input layers can go through with multiple hidden layers and finally it can predict the outcome whether this image belongs to let's say if it's about brain tumor and we are identifying whether the person has tumor or not then we can say that yes or no uh, depending on various properties which has been identified okay so now if i show you one thing i would like to tell you you have got this information here uh, excuse me i'd like to show you one image which i have recently drawn here this one 
So now I would like to convey one important information here. Now, depending on the neurons, I was saying that there could be n number of uh, layers could be possible on uh, depending on whatever use case you have. And uh, finally, the outcome has to be predicted depending on various different cases, depending on the number of pixels information. So now you need to understand this is about neural network. What is the objective of deep learning here? Okay. So what deep learning does, the objective of deep learning is to identify these weights and influence. And it has to identify the threshold or you can say the bias. Okay. So it is going to learn these properties. So deep learning with the algorithms, it is going to automatically learn the properties depending on the input layers. And finally, it is going to perform the prediction. Okay. And there are certain configurations which you can done. You can uh, customize the values of the bias so as to uh, make the output uh, land up into your requirements and kind of that. So a lot of things can be done with uh, deep learning, with deep learning and artificial neural network. Okay. But as of now, I hope you guys are pretty clear that what an artificial neural network is and how the neurons actually work. So the neurons work on the basis of input value, the weight and the threshold. These are the three important values. So the product of input and the weight and some of all these values, if it is greater than threshold, then the decision is going to be yes. And in case if it is smaller or equal to zero, then the decision is going to be no. So guys, sorry for interruption. Just give me two minutes. I just quickly get back to you. Okay. So I hope uh, now it is clear to everyone that the concept of neural network is something like that, that you have a neuron, you can represent zero to one information in it. And depending on that information, you can quickly calculate the output using uh, the neural network equations. And uh, deep learning is used to calculate the weights uh, in the in the hidden layers and in the hidden layers and the threshold within the hidden layers. Okay. So with various configurations, you can make different kinds of bias. You can make different kinds of weights depending on the configurations, and you can reach out to a result which is much satisfactory to you. Okay, so there is no need to define any custom equations in neural network. You just need to follow this that uh, if the product of input value and the weights uh, is greater than the threshold or is greater than the threshold, is, then it is a yes. Otherwise, if it is smaller or less than the threshold, then it is going to be a no value. Okay. Now, similarly, this equation can also be converted into another format for sigmoid neurons. So if we talk about sigmoid neurons, sigmoid neurons are pretty similar. The only thing, the difference is sigmoid neurons can store any value between zero to one. Okay. So let's say if in the real world, if, if it's a very big complex problem, you can have the values like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, like these values can be uh, up to any, any dec decimal number. You can have that into that neuron on that neuron store on the neuron space. Okay. And the equation changes a little. So when it comes to a sigmoid neuron, the equation is represented this way. Okay. Let me just quickly take you to the equation. So the equation looks like this for a sigmoid neuron here, like this. You can also represent the equation somewhat like that. So the output is going to be zero if the product of weight into input plus B. So plus B is something like minus threshold. Okay. You can quickly see here B value is known as bias. B here is known as bias. I'll just quickly let you all know what is X and so X could be considered as the input value, any value between zero to one. Okay. Similarly, you have W, W is going to be the weight. Weight is something like important, important value for the output, important value. You can also consider it as important or influence on the output. Okay. And the third value is bias. 
which is also known as minus threshold okay so again you are going to get that value so if it is less than equal to 0 you are going to get 0 as the response and similarly so 0 means the neuron is not going to be activated and 1 means the neuron is going to be activated if the neuron gets activated that means this is the final outcome or this is the value okay so i'm going to show you a real network that how these neurons gets fired and uh, this activation is known as firing of neuron agar main aapse brain ki baat karu to brain ke andar ek bahut hi common uh, quotation hai uh, neuroplasticity ke andar padhai jati hai aur batai jati hai न्यूरोप्लास्टिसिटी क्या है वो भी मैं आपको बताऊंगा सो दैट यू कैन इम्प्रूव योर लर्निंग पावर आप ज्यादा से ज्यादा लर्न कर सकें सो वॉट कुड बी न्यूरोन देर इज अ वेरी नाइस स्टेटमेंट विच इज नोन एज न्यूरोन दैट फायर्स टुगेदर दे वायर्स टुगेदर इन मेनी ऑफ द मोटिवेशनल वीडियोज यू कैन क्विकली ऑब्जर्व वॉट दैट स्टेटमेंट मीन्स दिस मीन्स इफ यू आर कॉन्स्टेंटली थिंकिंग अबाउट समथिंग so that neurons will fire in the brain and they are going to wire and whenever you are going to have any information in the surrounding in the environment your brain is going to capture that information and fire the neurons and make it happen for you okay so sometimes what people say if you are thinking positive if you are continuously thinking positive what neurons will do the positive neurons will fire and they will try to see all the positive side uh, of the information coming from the world similarly in case if you are thinking negative all the time all the time negative so then what will happen your negative neurons will fire and wire together in the brain and what they will do whenever there is a information negative information in the environment your brain is going to capture that negative information and is going to execute is going to activate the brain in that way so similarly uh, neurons gets fired and artificial neuron cannot be fired artificial neurons are activated okay so we call it as artificial neurons are activated and once an artificial neuron gets activated you are going to get the output okay so this is something very important on understanding what artificial network is and how the brain works or else how the neural network works now i would like to take you to uh, a real time case study or uh, a simulation that how these neurons will fire and how a big complex problem can be represented okay so to take you there i have got a very nice resource for you which i am going to share very shortly here so over here so now what are neurons and how we are going to represent different information so now we are taking the problem statement of image recognition okay in the starting i have already told you that artificial neural networks are capable of solving what kind of problems they are capable of solving um uh, image recognition speech recognition and natural language processing problems okay now so let's take an example of image recognition how the image is going to be recognized so i'm going to quickly play this segment for you and i'll keep on explaining so here is a neuron that can hold a number and the neuron which you guys are seeing over here is a sigmoid neuron okay why it is known as a sigmoid neuron because sigmoid neuron can hold a value any value between 0 to 1 and for example you have got a value 0.2 stored over here i hope this is clear to everyone that the neuron used here is a, a sigmoid neuron now so now what happens next how the neurons are going to process the information let's have a look so you can have different values of neurons here suppose you have an image okay aapke paas maan lijiye ek image hai and here the image is of 9 okay aapko bhi ek aisa image recognition ka ek product banana hai so suppose aapke paas ek image hai 9 theek hai this image has 28 pixels the height and similarly they have 28 pixels of width okay so when you actually do 28 pixels of width and height so 28 into 28 you're going to get 784 okay so what you actually have here is 
you have 784 pixels over here. Okay. Here I'm here. The information is going to be represented. You have 784 neurons here in the image and every neuron is going to hold a value. Okay. So suppose if I talk about this neuron here, so all these neurons, all these neurons are having the common value and it is zero because there is no grayscale intensity over here. So suppose you are representing a black and white image. What we generally do, we convert the black and white image into a grayscale. Okay. And once we convert it into a grayscale, which means we have converted the RGB values from zero to 255 into a grayscale between zero to one. Okay. So when we have converted the value into of an image into a, a grayscale, it is between zero to one and it could be any value between zero to one. So here, when, when there is no grayscale, when the color is absolutely black, the background is black. So we are going to say it is going to be zero. Now here, there will be certain areas which will have some lighter grayscale. Okay. You can see that some lighter grayscale areas, the borders and the edges areas. So these could be having any values consider, consider the values, let's say, uh, in key values ho sakti hai. somehow, let's say 0 0.3, anything like that. Just for example, I'm taking it. Okay. As if we value ho sakti hai. similarly, now, what do you have? You have here white neurons. Hai. Okay. Here you have the white neurons available. And these white neurons, what can be their value? Kya ho sakti hai? Consider their value 1. Ho sakti hai. I'll just wait for red and red. Okay. Consider this as 1. Okay. So now, you have 784 neurons. There are some neurons that have value absolutely 0. Hai. कुछ ऐसे न्यूरॉन्स हैं जिनकी वैल्यू 0 से 1 के बीच में है एंड देयर आर सम न्यूरॉन्स जिनकी वैल्यूज 1 है ठीक है सो नाउ यू आर गोइंग टू गेट द बेसिक इंफॉर्मेशन एंड दीस आर योर न्यूरॉन्स फॉर द फर्स्ट लेयर फर्स्ट इनपुट लेयर सो डिपेंडिंग ऑन द इनपुट गिवन टू यू अगर आपके पास कोई ऐसी इमेज है जो 1200 पिक्सल की है और 784 उसका हाइट है तो व्हेन यू मेक अ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ दोस पिक्सल्स दैट मेनी न्यूरॉन्स विल बी अवेलेबल ऑन द इनपुट लेयर दिस इज क्लियर टू एवरीवन ये कांसेप्ट क्लियर है आप सभी को ओके प्लीज कंफर्म मी ऑन चैट इफ बाय नाउ द कांसेप्ट इज क्लियर नाउ लेट्स सी सो यू हैव गॉट 784 एंड नाउ ऑल दीस पिक्सेल्स कलेक्टिवली सो नाउ हियर यू कैन सी दैट एवरी पिक्सेल हैज अ स्पेसिफिक वैल्यू एंड ऑल दीस पिक्सेल्स आर गोइंग टू मेक द लेयर्स Okay, some pixels would be having 0.1, some would be having 0.9, some would be having one. So there are different kinds of values will be available. And this value is known as the activation value. Okay, so the value hai, neuron ke andar, that is known as activation. Ab activation mein aapka bias aapko identify karna hai ki aap activate apna neuron kis value pe karna chahte ho. Let's say मैं कहता हूं कि अगर 50% probability है तो ही मैं ये काम करूंगा that means I'm going to activate my neuron to make my hand go and do that work in case if the probability is less than 50% then I'm not going to activate my neuron and I'm not going to perform my uh, my action with my hand or whatever whatever it is okay let's say if I say मुझे गर्मी लग रही है मान लो मेरे brain ने कुछ neurons देखे मेरे body ने uh, feel किया heat Depending on what senses ne neurons banaye, wo neurons mere mind mein aaye. Values aai wahan pe activation ki. Mainne bias set kar rakha hai ki yaar jab bhoot zyada pasina a jayega, meri t-shirt geeli ho jayegi, tabhi mein fan on karunga. Kind of that, let's say. Thik hai? So I have a bias of let's say 70%. If I'm feeling heat above 70%, only then I'm going to activate my fan on uh, neuron. So until the bias is less than 70%, I'm not going to perform any action. When the bias when my activation value crosses the bias, I'm going to perform that action. Okay. So your neuron gets activated as soon as they get a value above zero. So once your neurons gets activated, what next you're going to do? Post this activation. Now you're going to take all these inputs. Okay. All these are the layers and you're going to take it as 1784 neurons as the input layer. And finally, you're going to map it with multiple hidden layers. 
So now if I show you, this becomes your first layer, the input layer. This is your final output layer. Okay. Let's say out of the image, you would want to predict some values like it could be one, it could be two, it could be three, it could be four, it could be five, it could be six, kind of that. Okay. So now whichever neuron gets fired, we are going to get that predicted value. Let's say this belongs to this, two belongs to this kind of that. Okay. Three belongs to this, four belongs to this, five belongs to this, six belongs to this. And let's say nine belongs to a value somewhat like this. Okay, let's say I'm going to have nine here. And this neuron is going to be the ninth neuron. So what's going to happen? We're going to take the values. Let's say, depending on certain values, some activation functions will start. Depending on these activated nodes, okay? Let's say, depending on the features of the activated nodes, my final output is going to be activated. Okay? So now, in between these layers, what do you need to identify in between these layers? You need to identify their three values, the output from the first layer, the weight and the bias. These three values have to be calculated on each hidden layer. And this is the concept of deep learning DL. Okay. Is that clear? And it has to be done for every individual layer, which will be involved. You have given an image and now you are going to give it to uh, the neural network, neural network, artificial neural network algorithm is going to create a number of neurons. It's going to perform a lot of analysis or different properties available from the images. Okay. And finally, it is going to activate different sections and depending on the time, the deep learning gets trained, it will be able to extract more and more and more and more values. Okay. And uh, it is, it will explore all the possibilities to identify that information. And finally, it's going to activate the appropriate neuron. Okay. Now, so once we guys are done with that, let's proceed to the continuation part. So now here, once you have got this, so you will have the output layer, you can have different values. Similarly, whichever value gets activated, let's say you have a bias of 50% or 70% or 60%, depending on whatever value we have got, you're going to get the cell activated. In between, you will be having the hidden layers and hidden layers will have some N number of information. These information you have to search, you have to identify. Okay. So there would be two hidden layers. There could be N number of hidden layers. It could be any number of possible hidden layers. Okay. So you didn't need to worry about. You can have any number of layers. Okay. Now let's see. So now here there is a very important image, which you guys need to see, depending on the input layers, which you are going to receive only a, some random number of activation neurons will be activated depending on the bias on each different layer. Okay. And after the collection of this, the final output is going to be calculated. So that's what you need to understand that this is how neural networks is going to specifically work. Okay. Now let's proceed a little further. Okay. So you have got these multiple layers. So now let's say we have got a value seven. Now, depending on the seven, certain values will be extracted and the value will be identified. And how these images is going to be read that, that you're going to get to know pretty shortly. Okay, so now here is the example. Let's say you have got a couple of layers. You have got the cells activated. You have got an output at the layer number nine. How this is going to be done? Okay. Now here. So why do you need the layers? Okay, so this is a very important concept which you guys need to understand. 
I'll just quickly explain as soon as the right things come. You can have n number of different layers, that is for sure. But why these layers are important? Okay. So the layers are important. Let's say you have an image here. So out of that image, multiple patterns could be detected. Let's say out of eight different patterns could be detected. And now these different patterns will be represented on different layers, different neurons. Okay. Every pattern will be available on a specific neuron. So now in the second last layer, okay, as you all can see in the second last layer, you are going to get all the patterns, which has been identified using the deep learning equations. And once the activation functions gets activated and the appropriate neurons gets activated, you are going to get the output value predicted depending on the cells activated. Okay. So all the, all these examples will be, all these connections will be made. All the calculations will be shed. And finally, you're going to get, uh, finally, you're going to get back. Okay. The output. Now, I hope you guys are clear with how basically this part works. So now what generally we need to do is these networks are also known as feed forward neural networks because the output of input one will go to uh, the hidden layer one followed by the output of hidden layer one will go to hidden layer two and similarly the output of hidden layer two or the hidden layer n minus one or the hidden layer n it will go to the output layer so this is how all the layers are connected now in further sessions we will be understanding how to calculate the weights how to calculate the biases and how to improve the learning rates we are going to do that practically with uh, our deep learning model. I have got a lot of uh, practical examples, which I will be showing you uh, in order to perform deep learning in order to understand epoch and perform the predictions with 99% or 100% accuracy. That's what I'm going to tell you. Okay. So as of now, you guys are clear with the concept of what could be a neural network. And this is going to be the objective, which we are going to make. Moreover, we'll be taking multiple examples. I'll be taking a, initially I'll be taking a brain, uh, tumor problem with you. Jahan pe paas kuch brain ke images honge. On brain images ko hum train karenge. On brain images ke andar se hum detect karenge ki tumor hai ya nahi. Okay. And post that will come up, come to various different problems of, uh, which are available. Okay. Ye karne ke baad aap koi bhi custom image set ka set le lete hain. So you can solve complex artificial neural network ki image segmentation ki problems ko solve kar without, without any issues. Okay. So, uh, when it comes to all these important topics about what, uh, the sigmoid was and what, uh, the perceptron was similarly, there is one more example, not just these images space, uh, speech and NLP, you can solve any kind of problem with, uh, any logical problem with artificial neural network, because you will, you can see your perceptrons and these concepts can also represent your logical gates also. Okay. So you can represent and gate or gate NAND gate within your perceptrons. Okay. Or within your sigmoid neurons or in the artificial neural network. So it's not just images. It's not just values. You can represent logical gates values also. Okay. So any kind of problem can be sorted with uh, the concepts of neural network. So I hope you guys are clear with the concepts of what a neural network is. And as I have started this discussion here, that neural networks is a beautiful biologically inspired. Why we call it as biologically inspired because it is inspired from the brain, how the brain works. And it's a biological inspired programming paradigm, which enables the computer to learn from the observational data. So you're going to provide the observational data of images, speech, text. It's going to calculate various uh, properties like weights and the bias. And depending on that, using the techniques of deep learning, using the algorithms of deep learning, it is going to learn the learn various values. Okay. Now, if I have to tell you what kind of algorithms you will be learning during deep learning. So there's not just one, there are n number of algorithms available. 
uh, and there is recurrent neural network is also available wherein the loops facility is also available. We, you can back back propagate to the previous layer. So that that also you are going to learn uh, in the upcoming sessions. So uh, one thing I would like to show you the algorithms which you will be taking up. Okay. So on every individual layer, you will be having different algorithms which you will be going through. So you will be going through convolutional algorithms. You will be going through max pool algorithms. You will be going through RELU algorithms. There are different algorithms available. Okay. And what are the algorithms you need to go through? So the very first is the convolutional uh, neural network, the fully connected neural network, max pooling and RELU. So these are some of the uh, complex problems you will be going through where you are going to get an image, you're going to multiply that with the kernel value and you're going to generate a feature map and then using the feature map, you're going to process all these things. So uh, tomorrow I'm going to show you the code that how you're going to write every single piece of code right from a basic image and you are going to make a neural network. But this fundamental was very important, okay? That how the neurons are working and how the neural network is working. So once you understand that, you will be able to understand any algorithm and how is it, how it is working. So these are the few algorithms which you will be going through. Convolutional, fully connected neural network. Apart from fully connected, then you will be having the max pooling, the RDLU and the softmax algorithms, okay? So softmax algorithms are very popular when it comes to recognition of images, like whether it is a horse, whether it is a cow or whether, uh, let's say if you guys are using Google Captcha, you would have seen the images are being identified depending on the user input and uh, what image has been shown. So all these things can be done. So every equation has a specific uh, mathematical equation behind it, every algorithm, and then you have to implement all these with Python and perform the analysis, okay? So now that's all for today's technical discussion. In case if anybody has any doubt, you can please ask me. If you don't have any doubt, we are going to proceed towards a quiz which you guys have to answer. It's not a very big quiz. It's a very short quiz which you all have to attempt, okay? And uh, depending on the quiz, depending on the answers, uh, we have discussed depending on the questions we have discussed today. If you guys are able to solve the questions out, I'm going to release the result quickly. Now, if you are able to understand everything, then, uh, those students will be able to, uh, get tomorrow's practical class of implementing the code. If you are not, uh, able to pass the exam, then what you have to do is you have to go through with the video session again. I will have recorded the video session. I'm going to give it to you as soon as the session winds up in your Trello cards. You have to go through with the session again, understand the concept, implement it uh, on a paper so that your brain brings out the right concepts and so that you will be able to code it better. And there will be no confusion about what is happening in the background when you will be writing any function and uh, when you will be writing any codes, okay? So uh, this is very important. I have told you that appropriate information. Yeah. So any questions, let me know or else I am sending you the quiz. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Otherwise say yes and I can pass you the quiz. Okay, great. So I hope everybody has got it. I don't think the concepts were much difficult. So here, here is the, here is the list. As soon as you open it, you have to quickly go to the quiz here. I will also share the quiz with my live streaming partners. Anybody would like to have the quiz? We're going to share the quiz here. Okay, everyone. So once you guys open the quiz, what you all have to do is the artificial neural network quiz. You're going to specify your email address. There would be name as well somewhere here. Don't forget to answer your name. Okay. And uh, there will be certain definitions. There will be certain questions. 
all the questions are shuffled okay so just quickly have the answers one thing i would like to tell you all the questions which has radio buttons they are single choice questions wherever you find the check box it's a multi choice question and wherever you find the uh short answer there you have to give the definition of the neural network or whatever it is okay once you guys are done with that quickly go to send a copy and submit the results and i will be waiting for the responses so you all can start your quiz and let's see the responses i'm waiting for the responses live go for the quiz and let's see how much you have understood out of the class today and in each class you guys are going to have a quiz because i am very much concerned about whatever we are teaching how much you all are able to grasp out of it okay so you should be able to grasp the complete content whatever we are sharing in case if it is not possible somehow in the class to grasp all kindly revise it and uh, follow a 20 day rule of remembering all these concepts in your brain so that you never need to look back again neither to the docs or or to the videos so uh, once you have learned the concept today definitely try to revise it tomorrow then again on the 5th day then again on the 10th day and finally on the 20th day okay so make a 20 day rule to remember all the concepts especially what you will be learning with me okay because i will i would like to discuss a lot of technical concepts which can actually open your eyes that how real systems work okay so for that you need to put hard work so that's all uh, not that's all you all have to quickly take up the quiz i'm waiting for the responses as soon as we get the responses we'll wind up the session with any queries left and finally we'll discuss for tomorrow then we'll close the session we'll mark the topics and we'll close the session